Hello, my name is Jessica Knight, and this is the Relationship Recovery Podcast. This week, I'm going to take a little diversion from the qualities of a narcissist or how a narcissist presents himself series that I've been working on and taking you through to talk a little bit more about what it means to starve a narcissist. The reason that I'm bringing this up today is because I've had a few calls with people recently that we really need to get into the boundaries, and they're at the point in their relationship where it doesn't feel like this emotional pull away from somebody, but more so a, I need to set boundaries because this is ridiculous. And so I kind of want to talk to those people today and to cue you in on a few ways that you can begin to starve the narcissist. And I realize that you might be even wondering what that means. What does it mean to starve a narcissist? A narcissist thrives and feeds off of you. And so usually, consciously or subconsciously, they know what they're doing. That you give that, like they have an addictive pull to you, you are the supply. And if they have you, and if they're able to use you, manipulate you, you become the source of their energy. And so they need that. And when you start to starve a narcissist, you start or... You start setting boundaries so that they no longer have access to you. Now, usually they tend to react more because no narcissists and abusers don't like to set boundaries or they don't like it when boundaries are set on them rather. And so if you keep giving them your attention, if you keep engaging with them, their toxic presence will stay in your life for a long time. And learning how to stay emotionally neutral, uninterested and unengaged will force the narcissist to have to turn to somebody else to have their needs met. And again, for some of you that are really emotionally entwined, this could feel terrifying. Like you not being the supply could be absolutely terrifying. And so this podcast is not really for those who are still trauma bonded. This is really for the people that are frustrated. They're like, fuck this. I want this gone. I'm not doing this anymore. So I'm going to go over seven ways that you can start to starve a narcissist. One is go no contact. Block them from text, social media, email, and then go further. Block them on Spotify. Block them on LinkedIn. Block them on TikTok. Block their account and any other account that they can create on Instagram. Hide your Facebook. When you are able to eliminate their ability to get in touch with you, Mm -hmm. you set one of the firmest boundaries you can possibly set. I understand that if you're dealing with a family member, that might not be possible. If you're still emotionally entwined with the person, it might not be possible. If you're co-parenting, it might not be possible. But find ways to limit the communication and dumb it down to, you know, if you are co-parenting with somebody, I usually say there's like find one method and don't let that be text because they'll never end. One method, one method that you can turn on and off. Two is to be uninterested. They could be so engaging sometimes and they'll come to you and they'll be like, I want to let you know what I'm thinking or like, I really want to share this with you. I have a good story. Be uninterested. You don't need the story. It doesn't matter. Even if they go on and on and on about like, oh, I like, I'm not feeling well. And it's okay. Thanks for letting me know. The purpose of that is so that you don't get emotionally engaged. Once they notice that you're like caring because you're, um, I guarantee that you're empathetic. If you're listening to this, so once they start to see that you're caring and that you're loving and your arms are open, that's when they'll take full advantage. That's when they latch onto the supply until there's nothing left. So be uninterested with whatever they bring to you. The third one is keep it simple, which is very close to being uninterested, but it really means don't over engage. Very often I talk to clients about emails. This is a big thing that comes up because in text, we may stop sending long messages. 
We may stop having long conversations, but for some reason, email seems to be the area that a lot of us hang on the longest. We'll still send and write these long emails trying to explain what we think and our perspective and what we feel. And all we want is for them to see it and feel it and like see the effort that it took to write this email out. Stop. Because they're not going to see it. And the simpler you are, no matter if it hurts and no matter if it feels like you're ripping a Band-Aid off of your own skin as you're like either just not responding or responding with a line, it's really going to help you in the long run. It's going to help you to stop over explaining. It's going to help you to stop believing that they're going to hear you. Four. Set boundaries, firm boundaries. You can go back and listen to the boundary podcast, but essentially a boundary is a way to prevent the harm. And so if you're not willing to walk away when they're being manipulative, if you're not willing to silence your phone, to block them, to leave, then you're allowing them in. You're, the way to starve that is by walking away, is by setting the boundary, is by Putting in something that stops the harm. Five, don't talk about them anymore. And in an environment that's supportive, it's fine. In therapy, in coaching, with your trustworthy friend. But don't start talking about them and their behavior with people that know them. This one is very loaded because the narcissist will also be on their own smear campaign. They will be telling everybody that you're the worst and that you suck and that it's your fault. But the truth is, is that a lot of this goes back to them. They're finding ways to run away from their behavior. But when you start When you continue talking to people that are mutual friends, you're going to feel crazy. And this is going to prevent you from feeling crazy. When you stop engaging, you will realize that like, there's really like nothing anybody could say that's ever going to change your perspective. But when you are constantly talking and engaging and, you know, hearing different perspectives, it does. And they're going to, No, and they're going to care that you continue to talk about them. So the more, like when you stop, it really helps. Six, be mindful of their manipulations. So almost every narcissist has a set of behaviors that they do. You probably know them. You probably could write a book about them. I always encourage people to write down exactly what tends to happen and what you're not going to do anymore. If they, if they promise they're going to send you an email and take accountability, they just need to work on it. It never comes. You sit around, you keep checking your email and you ask them for it. You can walk away from that entire cycle. You don't need to hear what they have to say. If they're constantly apologizing for their behavior if they're trying to find ways to kind of like get you to connect when your boundaries are set stop being flexible with your boundaries because what's going to be important is our last one which is living your life like just keep living your life that starves a narcissist and it could be really hard when you're breaking away from narcissistic abuse it'd be really freaking hard to take one step forward every day to make it to the gym in the morning to dream the big dreams that you have to focus at work because your life has been probably spent dealing with them and dealing with their you know what they think and what they do and what they will do and what they might say and living in this little tiny bucket for a long time but every time you take a tiny 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 step forward to living your life you're stepping more into yourself so even if it is like okay I could not get up to go to the gym today but I I'm going to walk three laps around the block. At least I did that for myself. I'm going to choose the meals that I really want to have, and I'm going to make them for myself today. 
I'm going to put my phone away for all of Sunday. I'm going to spend time writing that book that I really want to write. I'm going to book a session with that tarot reader that I love, that he used to always make fun of me for. Whatever that might be, just take those tiny steps forward to your life and show yourself that you can live it. It has nothing to do with them. And it has everything to do with you being in your own world. And so I hope that these are helpful for you. And I hope that this helps you set some more boundaries. I'm probably going to pick up with the qualities coming into next week and the week after. But if this was helpful or if you need some more resources, you can always feel free to reach out on Instagram at Jessica Knight Coaching. Also on Instagram at Emotional Abuse Coach and at JessicaKnightCoaching.com. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.